This is the third attempt at me trying to clean my direct injection petrol engine. I've already tried a hydrogen clean and I've tried CRC's chemical cleaner. Links for those videos in the description. This video will include the cleaning process, before and after power figures and the before and after images of the intake valves. Quick overview on the problem. My car, which has many miles, 153,000 to be precise, has blocked intake ports, which is a bit like trying to run down the road with a blocked nose. It's a little bit of a problem. Typical symptoms include lack of power, misfiring, hesitation. Some mechanics may mistake this for being a spark, fuel, compression, or vacuum problem, when in actual fact, your intake valves just need a good old clean. So this may be the solution to your problem. I'm confident this method will work, so I've taken it to Dukes Park Automotive in Chelmsford, who are gonna use some walnuts to solve the problem. Yes, walnuts. Walnut shells, to be precise, ground down into they're like sand, and that's gonna be blasted at the valves to remove the oily deposits and carbon in the same way sandblasting would, except with sandblasting, if you get a little bit of sand in your engine, that's very bad news indeed. But if you get a little bit of walnut in your engine, it's just gonna smell of burnt walnuts for a few minutes after you turn it on. Not the end of the world. First job is to take the intake manifold and charge cooler off to gain access to the intake ports and valves. Then remove the spark plugs to make it easy to turn the engine. You wanna turn the engine until the valves are closed on the valves you're currently blasting. If you blast the valves with them open, you'll get excessive amounts of walnuts in your cylinders. And although a small amount of walnut in your cylinder is not gonna do any harm, a lot of walnut shells in your cylinders will do some harm. This tool makes the job a lot easier. This end of the tool fits up against the intake port. Then you can blast walnuts through this hole whilst a vacuum cleaner is attached to this end, sucking out spent walnut shells and debris from the valve ports. You use this wand extension through the hole to blast the walnut shells directly onto the valve. Before you start blasting away with walnuts though, you need to get a pick and remove the big sticky chunks and then suck it out with a vacuum cleaner. If you don't remove those big sticky chunks, the walnuts will get stuck to those chunks and then you'll be blasting walnuts on top of walnuts on top of walnuts on top of walnuts so you won't actually be getting to the hard baked on stuff underneath that you want to attack. Here is an example of Tom doing just that. He has the adapter up against the intake port under vacuum from the vacuum cleaner, whilst he uses the wand to blast the valves with walnuts. This is the important bit. Take a look at his thumb. Most of the time his thumb is only partially depressed on the trigger, which means he's blasting compressed air into the port to remove any debris he's already knocked off the valve. It's only when he fully depresses his thumb with the trigger that he's actually blasting walnuts at the valve to clear it off. He does that in short bursts to avoid the port getting filled up with walnuts, which prevent the walnuts from hitting the valve. How much it costs to do the work varies greatly from car to car, and it all comes down to how hard it is to get to your valves and how many cylinders you have. My car has four cylinders and it's quite easy to get to the valves, so it only cost me 300 pounds to do the work. But let's say you had a V8 and it was quite hard to get to your valves, you could easily pay three or four times that. I guess you're ready to see the before and after images. Click up there to tell me how clean you think these valves are gonna be. Here's a lovely picture of how they looked before. And ta-da! After the walnuts, they're as clean as a Swiss pavement. Okay, so question is, is it any faster? Well, I'm on a 60 road. Let's get down to about 20 into second gear and find out. Full throttle. Oh yeah, that, that does feel a bit quicker. That's 60 already. That, that feels like about a 10% power increase to me. Well, that's what my bum says. Let's see what the dyno says. Now for the moment of truth. I've taken the car to Tommy at Velocity Tuning in Colchester to see how much power it's making after the walnut blast. This is where I can end up looking like a bit of a spanner because I've told everyone I'm expecting a 10% increase in power. If the car has no power gains, I'm gonna clearly look like I have no idea what I'm talking about. Click on the pop-out banner to guess the power gain. And the results? 23 more horsepower and 51 more newton meters of torque, bringing me to a total of 147 horsepower and 297 newton meters of torque. I know that sounds like a whole lot of numbers, but basically that's a 20% 
increase in power and torque. That means my car has nine more horsepower and 47 more newton meters of torque than it should have when it's brand new. But VW are a bit like that. They always understate their figures. If you buy a 140 horsepower car from VW, it quite often has closer to 150 horsepower. And VW also have a reputation for understating their pollution figures. Back to the power. There is a factor I didn't mention. There is one factor that needs to be taken into consideration. Yeah. We are no longer in the summer. Shh, just don't tell them that. It's hot, <laughs> sorry mate, it's a bit hot. It's cold. <laughs> Engines don't like the cold. Engines don't like, no. Now, to be honest, most engines do get slightly better power figures in cold weather than hot weather, but Tommy's dyno does take this into account and it wouldn't account for a 20% increase in power, more like possibly a 5% increase. More importantly though, it runs so much smoother than before and that was my main problem. It doesn't hesitate when it's cold and it no longer misfires in a high gear when they give a lot of gas. It runs as smooth as a Rolls Royce. Maybe not that smooth, but very smooth. On another note, I haven't been able to find any evidence for this affecting VW diesels, but I know it does affect BMW diesels. So if you have a VW diesel, and VW does include, say it, Skoda, VW, and Audi, and you've had this problem where the intake ports get clogged up, let me know in the comments. So if you have a direct injection engine, it's down on power, it misfires, or it's hesitant. Walnuts, that may be your solution. Like the video if you like it, please subscribe to get my future videos and I'll see you on the next one.